Hi there, Wednesday evening, 7 p.m. Johnny Daniel, independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up. How are you tonight? Just wanted to say hello. Welcome to almost summer. I know it's not till June 21st, but the school's out, so nobody has any class anymore. <laughs> so tonight we are playing a little bit with the new Daisy Lane bundle want to show you the size difference and some things that can be done with it. Um, samples will be up tomorrow, so just want to let you know what we're doing tonight. Um, let's see, what else is going on? The um, class for Shirley on Saturday has been postponed till probably October. Um, everybody's going on vacation, go figure. And um, let's see, Betty's class is still going on the 29th and... I think that's about it for now. So um, without anything else, we're gonna get some, a little bit of creating done. Tonight might be a tiny bit shorter. So we will get a few things done and see how it goes. And like I said, we're gonna be playing with the new Daisy Lane bundle. So hold on just a sec. Hey Cheryl, hi Denise. Sorry, we're going surfing a little. So. All right, almost there. Center this a tiny bit. Get everything else moving and doing. And give me just a half a second to get everything situated. And we will be on a roll. So tonight we are just playing with the Daisy Lane Bundle. Um, and I say playing because I don't know if you've seen it or not yet, so I want to make sure that you know what it looks like and you know what to expect and all those kind of things. Um, and if you want to see a specific product, please let me know of the new catalog. Uh, I'm almost set. Hold on just a second. So. Alrighty, so for tonight, obviously you see the difference in the punches. This is the medium one. This is the original one from last year's catalog. Okay, I got something all over. Ah, eraser from doing adhesive stuff. Alright, so for tonight we've got some card bases and we're just going to play. Okay, so for tonight I've got my Daisy Lane stamp set. This is the new one. Gorgeous with foil, so we'll probably do this um, at another time when I have some foil, um, but I don't right now. So let's see. So we're going to do some black and white on a white card base, and then we're going to do pear pizzazz with the perennial essence, and we're going to see what we get. Okay, so that is what we're trying to accomplish tonight, and with that being said, we will get moving on this and see what kind of trouble we can get in. So, so if you were in card class last week, was it last week? Yes. Um, you will notice the paper um, that was impressed or embossed with the swirls and, curl, swirls and curls embossing folder. Hey, Therese, thank you for sharing, hon. I appreciate it. So, um... So I've got a misstep here. Obviously we did it very crooked, right? So um, we're gonna use this for our um, punch outs today, okay? So just a quick little, let's see, grab my snail here, yeah? Okay, and I'm gonna see, where's my trimmer? Just like you, my craft room has its piles also, especially when I'm in the middle of prepping and haven't done a lot of classes because honestly, I missed right up top there. Um, honestly, classes are often the reason that I end up cleaning. So if you're not coming over, well, we'll just, we'll just say ask Jan because she has um, surprised me once or twice and... Um, it's not been pretty. <laughs> we will just say it that way. So this is the Perennial Essence Specialty Designer Series paper that we have. So very almost Van Gogh lily pad kind of 
impressionist um, look to it. So love that paper. I've already gone through at least one pack. I'm not even counting anymore. I don't even know. And that's not including the samples that I did for you guys. That's just me personally. So a couple notes on your snail adhesive. After a couple of years, because I'm getting a couple of mine that are starting to not work, okay? And this is with classes and stuff, so this is probably going to last you quite a bit longer. But I want to tell you, the gears do wear out. The stickies gum up the gears and that kind of stuff. And eventually they will not work as well and you will have to buy a new one. But I'm talking... Unless you're crafting all the time, because my class ones are just now starting to go after probably five years or so. So, I mean, you've got a good long while, but just make sure when you do the refill that you make sure that the base of it is not all gummed up with adhesive, that where it comes out and rolls and everything else is pretty clean. Okay? So that's what you want to do. Nothing major but it's just something you want to kind of pay attention to. Okay, so we've got our designer series paper and then we're gonna do some texture punching tonight. So I've noticed with the larger daisy one, when you punch it, for one, mine is difficult, but it's been used and abused. Um, which is probably why, but you want to make sure to kind of pull out to the left. For some reason, if you go to the right, it, mine at least always jams up. I don't know about yours, but mine definitely does. So I'm going to go as far over as I possibly can. Okay, nice new punch. So there's a nice snap on that spring still, right? Let's see, can I get two out of this? Maybe just barely. Let's hope so. Yep, totally can. Okay. Got pieces and parts flying here, but it'll be okay. So we've got that. You want to use glue dots when you're putting these guys together. Couple notes on that. On the whole glue dots thing. Alright, first off, you are going to look on the roll not on the sheet because if you look on the sheet unless you leave a whole bunch of overlay or flap you will end up gluing your whole roll to the inside of your box okay so you don't want to do that in case you didn't know that all right so what i'm going to do is grab here you can apply them directly to your paper you always want to do at least two so it doesn't swivel on you Okay. Yes, they will swivel on you if you only have one swivel this way and that way. And let's see here. Okay. Okay. And we're going to put another one down and just offset all of these puddles. Okay. And then, of course, we got to get some bling. I mean, that's a given, right? So... I'm thinking we need to do pearls, not because they were on top, but because of the paper we have, okay? Now let's see, let me reach down here. Okay, um, I've got my take your pick tool with all its bits and pieces. So we've got our foam mat, we've got our dye brush attachment, we've got our stylus, we've got our putty refill, and then we've got our actual Take your pick tool. Go figure, huh? So I'm using this to get the pearls off. You want to make sure your putty hasn't dried out and squirmed all over the place. And when you do it, you're going to squeeze it up and then just push to make a broader base. Okay? So I've got that here. Sometimes it doesn't work on the larger ones, but hey, today I got lucky. So, so we've got that and then I'm going to grab these itty bitties. And I'm just going to put them on the base of the petals. I really just want to offset um, this center so that way it can be seen very well. And 
bring some attention to that texture and you know in oops becomes another creative opportunity and becomes another work of art even though we didn't plan it so the only other thing is this card's going to be pretty thick because of all the layers so you want to make sure if you're mailing this that you put all these pearls towards the back of the envelope where the address is not where the flap is and you want to do that because it's away from the machine and it won't get caught up as much you also want to put maybe a scrap piece of cardstock to buffer where that off offset is so that way it doesn't get caught up okay so we're gonna do this here and finish this up now if you don't like glue dots tear tape is another option you know we got all kinds of options right um, you can also do the Tombow or the liquid so so let's see here let's bend this a little bit to give it a little life before I put it down okay Hi, Heidi. How are you, hun? I just looked up. Sorry, sweetie. I was stamping. Go figure, huh? So I'm just going to get this down here like this, and then later on I'm going to put some words down here. But, you know, okay? And then the next one we're going to do is all black and white. Kind of cool, right? At least I hope so. We'll see how it goes. Um, I do need another piece of white, though. I didn't realize, so hold on a second. Let's see if I have one in the pile, shall we say? I usually do. Yep, sure do. Okay, so we've got our mats. I don't know how they're cut because I just grabbed them out of the box, but hey, look at that, they're perfect. So love it. Okay, so I'm just gonna create a quick background by stamping these daisies, okay? Gotta get me some blocks. Um, will that one fit on there? I'm not sure. It barely fits, but you always wanna go about a half a size larger because you wanna see the, you always wanna see the sides of your stamp so you can see the placement. If it's right on the line, you don't know exactly where it stops and then it gives you a little bit of trouble. So if you're looking for perfect placement, you really want to get things um, so they're not right on the line. See, that's a border line because see how that bottom one is? So I will move it up just a smidge. See how you can see the edges now? So you want to make sure you can see all your edges. If you can't do that, then, you know, you're kind of... A little bit SOL because you need to see those edges so you can place it right so okay so we're gonna just create a quick background here hopefully there's ink on this thing we're gonna find out real quick hey good enough for me the linen pads tend to dry out a little bit quicker and I end up having to re-ink them quite often so Love how this one stamps though. So we're just gonna do a couple of those and a couple fill-ins of the smaller one. Stamping more on my background than I am on my, huh? <laughs> That's okay though. All right, so we've got that. I guess my punch out's gonna go right there so that, since I didn't plan all that well. It's okay though. So, we're gonna do a little bit of this and a little bit of that and we're gonna get it done, right? Okay, let's see, can I squeeze another one? Oh, I might be able to. We're gonna see how that one works punched out. I'm not sure. So I'm gonna cover this so I don't end up with black on something because you know how that happens quickly around here at least. And I'm going to do a black base to offset this. Now I'm going to punch right in the center. And normally I would tell you to stay on the sides, right? I think I locked this open. Hold on. Uh, come on. Yep. 
couldn't figure out why it was going. A lot of times it's because your lock is in the wrong position. Like I just did. Nice. Oh, come on. I want you to work. There we go. Okay. So I did it in the center so I could put my mat over and keep that, save a little bit of paper. Okay. So there's my one. Now with this, you're going to have to line it up pretty carefully since I stamped all kind of goofy like, but it'll be okay. If you do it fast enough, it'll be all right, right? So not really a trick to lining this up other than um, there is one thing. With these punches, there's a stopping point and there's some paper in there, but there is a stopping point with the punches before it actually dents your paper that you can hold it and it stays put as you can see so you just got to find that sweet spot beforehand so that way you can use two hands and get the job done okay okay so let's get this one assembled this is our black and white card um, I don't know if any of you have ever heard of Ansel Adams but my uncle was a big fan and uh, my mom to a slightly lesser degree had some of her photos and whatnot so she was a very much a black and white photographer did some really famous stuff out of Yosemite and different places so just kind of a cool tribute to her I guess you would say right so We've got this guy here. And then we're gonna clean up a tiny bit so I have room. And I'm gonna grab my glue dots again. And I'm just going to assemble. Now this one, notice how it's a little more crooked than this one, punch-wise. So I'm gonna put this one on the bottom and hopefully it won't be seen as much. Not that it's a big deal, but, you know, details, right? It'll kill you if you let it. So, Let's see here. Okay. Okay. And we're just going to shape this really quick. If you prefer, you can use a stylus and a piercing mat, but sometimes when you're trying to be quick, you just, your fingers sometimes are the best thing you got. Okay. Alrighty, so that's what we are looking at, and I think I'm going to put mine right there to cover that blank spot, because I don't like that blank spot, but we will get it. So I just wanted to show you with this the difference between the older daisy and the new one. So, okay, there we go. And I guess you can position it this way. You could do it this way. I wouldn't say to go this way because then it would be backwards. But I'm looking it's probably going to go this way for me. And then put some words down there to balance that out. Um, so that is what I've got for you tonight. Some Daisy Lane that looks very different, thankfully. And um, without anything else, I think I'm going to let you you know, go finish sipping your wine by the pool, right? Uh, yeah, we're going to say that, but in reality, no, we're all sitting under our fan because it's 100 degrees. We can offer that one in a class, Hyde. We'll figure it out, huh? So, I've got a class coming up for Betty, so maybe I'll have to put that in there. Yep, no problem, hun. So, We've got some other, I've got some other ideas too, but those will be displayed at a later time. So, definitely case, no problems. So, without anything else, I will tell you to please follow me at stampingwithjohnny.com. Thank you for joining me tonight, and I hope you got something out of it, and enjoyed our walk down Daisy Lane. Pun intended. Talk to you later. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great night.